But um, yeah. let's talk about what happened this morning. Are you shocked by this downgrade from S&P? No, not at all. I think that we're just in a continuous kind of waterfall uh, of credit downgrades of Europe and European institutions for the time being. But let's be clear. Single A still means that Italy's going to pay. Right. It's just a little more risky and a little less liquid than it was previously. Okay. But what about its huge debt burden, the second largest in the Eurozone? It is. And yeah. it's, one of the, it's one of the largest in the world, and it's one of the largest bond markets in the world. So this is serious stuff. Uh, you get to the situation where investors are beginning to doubt that the second, third, fourth largest country exposure in their portfolios uh, is a risky investment, right. uh, then there's a big reassessment of global risk underway. Okay, single A means that Italy can still pay, but uh, some are thinking about contagion yep. and, and that, default. That default, I think, is not an Italian, uh, Italian risk at this stage. I mean, the markets could force Italy eventually into default by pushing the bond yields down, mm -hmm. bond, bond prices down so far uh, that the refinancing rollover is very expensive. But I think, you know, let's be clear, default is a Greek risk conceivably a Portuguese risk, possibly an Irish risk. Mm -hmm. The risk elsewhere in Europe is a liquidity risk mm -hmm. uh, and a rollover risk. At okay, the so Spain, I didn't hear Spain in your Yeah, I mean Spain listings. again. Spain is like Italy. It, it has the curse of very low growth. Mm -hmm. It has the problem of quite high debt. Um, it has the issue that um, the more austere its fiscal policy becomes, mm -hmm. the lower the growth becomes growth potential becomes, and less revenue gets collected. What's going to happen in Europe? <laughs> I wish I knew. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I think that, that we're clear we've reached the stage now in Europe where the whole thing needs reliquification in some way. How do you do that? Well, there's a number of possible routes, but let's remember also, these are 17 sovereign countries with lots of individual governments, parties, so there's a lot of people to come to the table. That means probably the European Central Bank has to be part of the game to a big extent. Mm -hmm. That means the EFSF, which is currently uh, wending its way through European Parliament for approval, has to be ratcheted up. Uh -huh. But it can't be ratcheted up by putting more onto the taxpayers. It has to be leveraged up, right. and the European Central Bank are the only people who can really do that logically. And we're talking about a common euro bond? Eventually, but yeah. we're a long way from that. Mm -hmm. Where we are now is trying to just stabilize the debt dynamics and the debt financing dynamics. Okay, well, so what concerns you more? What keeps you up at night? Is it more of what's happening in Europe or also about the U.S., which some say are in more dire straits? Well, I think the Western world generally, the old West as you might call it, the Wild West, uh, has, a, has real problems of growth. It has real problems when people start to question uh, governments and their ability to repay. Mm -hmm. So it's the combination of the two. You know, the burden of paying for uh, the U.S. fiscal deficits, saw Obama's speech uh, today, yeah. is going to fall more on its citizens. That means slower growth in mm -hmm. due course. Um, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff out there. Oh, the yeah. Moment. Tell me about it. The yeah. sentiment is really <laughs> taking a hit, isn't it? Uh, well, you and, you know, earlier on I was speaking to TCW Group's chief global strategist. He was predicting recession in the U.S. for the third and fourth quarter, and then an eventual recession in Europe as well for the first quarter of next year. I think one can be more confident that there's going to be very, very slow growth at best mm -hmm. in Europe next year. Right. I mean, Not negative huge... growth, though. Well, <sighs> negative, minus one, plus one. When you, get to, when you get to that sort of level, Susan, you're really in the case where it could go anywhere. Yeah. Um, I think we're now at the stage of not debating whether or not there's going to be a recession. Mm -hmm. I mean, recessions come along every five, six years. Uh, not whether there's going to be a recession, but if it's going to be a really deep one. Okay. And that's where the big risk lies. Okay, so Ewan, what do you advise and tell people to do um, in these uncertain times? What I found interesting is, take a look at gold prices, right? Yeah. Usually, they go up, the gold prices go up when we have a market sell-off. Yeah. That didn't happen overnight. Well, the lesson of Lehman was there's a dash for cash. Uh -huh. uh, and I guess that's what's happening a little bit. People have made a lot of money out of gold over the course of the last few years cashing in a little bit. Right. It's still a good asset to own. Mm -hmm. it's gold still, is, Gold right? is still a good asset Cash to is own. good, too. Cash, is <laughs> give, cash gives you nothing. I mean, you know, eventually what's going to happen is governments are going to re-liquefy. Yeah. So Operation Twist is going to re-liquefy part of the mortgage market in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the Europeans are going to change their views. The change of leadership in the ECB is coming along. Mm -hmm. They're going to re-liquefy. That means currency debauchery. Okay. So it means holding gold against paper currency is a good idea. All right. So you advise BlackRock managers as a portfolio manager. You have to make money on uh, yeah, basically your clients' <laughs> investments, right? You can't just hold cash sure. and earn nothing. What do you do in these uncertain times, as you said? Well, I think, you know, the story here in Asia is still a positive one, although clearly growth rates are going to slow down. Clearly profit forecasts are coming under pressure. Uh, valuations are declining in the equity market. That's going to provide a really good opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think if we look at the West and the equity space, you know, gold mining shares, mm -hmm. very good, because you know, the gold price is high. 
Um, they're, making, they're going to make a lot of money. It's one of the few areas where earnings forecasts are going to be rising. Brand companies, you know, stable earners, um, high dividend payers, and in a world where interest rates are going to be at zero mm -hmm. for a long time, they make a lot of sense. Okay, and you're of never, you're financials, you're never, you say. Oh, financials, well, I think if you're going to invest <laughs> in, look, you're going to invest in financials, there's two strategies. One is you own the best debt that the financials uh, operate, mm -hmm. because that's sold down. If you're a real optimist and you think this is going to work out with reliquification, you know, close your eyes and buy some European bank shares, but boy, you've got to be prepared. That, that's it's a like big... It's like a polar bear a, swim, isn't it? Well, that that is, that, that is, that's the extreme view. I mean, ultimately, I don't think it's a great idea, but if you really want to be an out-of-the-end out optimist, something's going to change, well, that's your, that's your bungee jump investment. All right.